Another thing I want to talk about was uh, Japan before and after World War II. Did you guys know how... I was reading uh, Nothing Less Than Victory, or parts of it. I was reading the chapter on Japan and the history of Japan. I mean, everyone, you know, when we talk about World War II, I feel like Japan really isn't discussed that much outside of Pearl Harbor and the, uh, the atomic bombs. But Jesus, Japan was way more nationalistic than Nazi Germany was. And it makes sense because even if you start the history of Nazi Germany the day Hitler took over the chancellorship, which even then I don't think the Nazis really had full power yet, um, depending on how you look at it. But even if you start it in 1933, the Nazis were not in power for that long leading up to World War II. Uh, but the state in Japan was in power for decades, for nearly a century leading up to World War II. And they had decades of indoctrination. So listen to this. It's according to Nothing Less Than Victory. Uh, by John Lewis. That's his name, right? Anyway. Uh, an imperial rescript or decree on February 1870 declared the emperor of Japan to be a living god and his throne to be a holy office. The emperor had been largely powerless in the past, perhaps even a hostage taken by leading families to maintain their power. Now he has refashioned into now he has refashioned into the nominal head of the nation, the divine anchor of, for its military rulers, and the living embodiment of the Yamato race and the Kokutai, the Japanese national essence. National essence in quotes. In the following decades, Japanese leaders created a mythology in which the imperial throne had been occupied from the immemorial by a direct line of succession from the sun goddess Amaterasu. This national mythology was deliberately connected to Shinto, a cluster of beliefs and customs of the Japanese people centering on the kami, a term which designates spiritual entities, forces, or qualities that are believed to exist everywhere in man and nature. Japanese leaders used Shinto to legitimize the political sovereignty of the emperor, nationalizing Shinto shrines and directing rituals in those shrines to venerate him and obey his wish. And then, uh, the, the, and then this is another highlight of the book that I made. The Meiji Constitution was the product of Japanese investigations into Western constitutional forms. Japanese leaders ultimately rejected English and American options in favor of Prussian-based authoritarianism. No surprise there. A conception of the political state with no room for individual rights, no limits to power of government, and no citizens, only subjects whose minds and bodies were subordinated to the embodiment of the Kokutai, the emperor. The Japanese people learned that the way of the subject is to be loyal to the emperor and disregard of self, thereby supporting the imperial throne coexistence co coextensive with the heavens and with the earth. The imperial wish became law disseminated through rescripts and blah blah blah. And yeah, there's uh, I could go on and on. I'm not going to bore you guys with uh book excerpts but yeah the it goes on to talk about how japan uh leading up to world war ii i mean this was decades and, and it was very indoctrinated into their kids so imagine this hardcore nationalism just pumped into the heads of japanese kids for generation after generation and they also they rejected uh you know international trade you know, it's funny because they wanted to reject Western influence. They, I mean, of course, they accepted uh, the influence of Central Europe and and the Prussian form of totalitarian rule. And th they gladly accepted uh, the technological benefits of uh, of Western influence. But they were also against like international trade because they didn't want Western influence uh, degrading their culture and their traditions. 
And what does this sound like to you? Does this not sound like the nonsense that the goofy-ass gripers have been pushing? About national unity? And, uh, you know, it, it, trying to integrate some form of religion like Christianity to, to unify the nation and rejecting globalism, rejecting international trade, especially immigrants. Because a lot of the Groypers, I see that they like to um, credit Japan as an example of, uh, of cohesion, of, uh, of a homogenous society. And that's why Japan does so well. Actually, they were more consistent with the Groyper line of thinking prior to World War II. The reason why Japan is great is because they picked a fight with the United States and America whooped their ass so hard. In fact, uh, if you read this book, you'll find out that even after the bombing of N Nagasaki, the second atomic bomb, uh, the leaders were still uh, still not sure if they wanted to surrender. But uh, it wasn't until the United States came in and said, we don't want you guys going crazy with your, your goofy-ass nationalism again. And so uh, the United States Im imposed... An America-like constitution and respect for individual rights, some semblances of uh, capitalism. And that's why Japan's doing so well. Of course, it's uh, these aspects that the Groypers would probably hate. They probably hate that uh, that Japan is making uh, games like this, Mario Maker. Yeah, see, yeah, uh, they, they love to champion Japan. I'm not sure they're crazy about uh, the Japanese making game Nintendo Switches and and games like Mario that uh, that 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 American uh, young men play instead of uh, starting families and going to church. They probably hate the competition from uh, from Japanese automakers. I mean, I remember Nick Fuckface. I, I remember I hadn't really found out about him until he tweeted something about uh being very dismissive of libertarians and and free market people because uh they like to talk about nice technology like flat screen tvs and computers and iphones meanwhile uh they don't really care about uh you know the lack of family values in the culture So if anything, um, the Japanese were embraced the Groyper mentality to a, a pretty extreme, hard extreme, prior to World War II. I mean, they were they were going they were tr they were waging war across Asia, trying to take over uh, China and the Philippines and I think Manchuria, Korea. And uh, that led them to their destruction from uh, from a more capitalistic, individualistic society like the United States. And then uh, we imposed real uh, Western civilization on them after World War after World War Two. So yeah, you uh, you guys want to be like the Gripers? You're going to get destruction. You want to be like uh, America and capitalism? You're going to get fun video games like. Uh, like Super Mario.